If you had a chance, would you visit your own grave? This week is the 157th anniversary of the Battle of Gettysburg. For me, the Battle of Gettysburg is a big deal. I don't know why, I can't put my finger on it, but ever since I was a kid and I had my very first trip to Gettysburg in May 2000 for my 8th grade trip, I've always felt a weird sense of home at Gettysburg. I don't know why, but when I visited there, I also like knew where everything was already. And you're talking about a 14-year-old from California who really didn't know like her right from her left, and the furthest east I had ever been was basically Kentucky or West Virginia or Ohio, whichever is the furthest east. Anyway, I have always been fascinated with Gettysburg. I have done a lot of research on Gettysburg, uh, from the battle to the individual stories. And to me, the most important part of the Battle of Gettysburg are these stories. So the individuals who actually lived the event, and you can actually get some of the most accurate accounts just by reading these eyewitness testimonies. And along the way, I've always found some really interesting stories from it. And this one is probably the weirdest of all. Before we get started, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, give this video a like, and feel free to follow me on Facebook, TikTok, Instagram. As I always say, I'm pretty much everywhere. You can always find me. Okay, here we go. So how is it possible that a Civil War soldier was able to visit his own grave in Gettysburg? I mean, was he a ghost? Was he a time traveler? We're gonna explore all that right now. Private Stephen Kelly was born between 1833 and 1835, and he was born in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. He was part of the 91st Pennsylvania Volunteer Infantry Regiment in Company E. Ooh, that was a mouthful. So he was mustered in on August 21st, 1861, and before Gettysburg, the regiment fought in the Battle of Fredericksburg and the Battle of Chancellorsville. So, also around like 1862, 1863, a lot of these regiments wanted to defend their own state, their home state, or as they would say back then, their fireside. The 91st Pennsylvania Infantry was no different, and there was word that Lee was starting to head north, which meant he was probably going to hit Pennsylvania, so this infantry was more fired up than ever to go defend their home state. So on July 1st at 8 p.m. of 1863, the 91st Pennsylvania Regiment packed up their things and they headed towards Gettysburg. And they arrived uh, the morning of July 2nd, 1863. And that afternoon, they marched over to Little Round Top and they fought against the Confederate sharpshooters that were hiding in Devil's Den. And on 4th of July, they even managed to take in a few Confederate prisoners. In all, the 91st Pennsylvania Infantry uh, had 21 casualties and 19 of them were enlisted men and I believe two of them were officers. Now some years later there was a veteran walking around the Soldiers National Cemetery and he was looking in the Pennsylvania section and he's looking at the names on the headstones and then he stops and he looks bewildered. He cannot believe what he is seeing. He stopped at Stephen Kelly's grave. Now what could have been so shocking to him to see Stephen Kelly's grave. I mean, a lot of soldiers died in Gettysburg, like 53,000 casualties. I mean, there was a lot of death and bloodshed in Gettysburg. It shouldn't be a shock to see someone's name on a headstone, unless your name was Stephen Kelly. That's right, Stephen Kelly was looking down at his own grave. Again, how could this be? Was he a ghost? Was he a time traveler? Was he looking at his future? There was a lot of confusion because Kelly was alive and well, and whatever body was in the pine box below that headstone was not his. So according to a few sources, Stephen Kelly actually got sick or he got hurt and he was actually in a hospital in Baltimore, Maryland in early July, which meant that he would have never stepped foot in Gettysburg in July of 1863 when the Battle of Gettysburg happened. And what's even more interesting is on October 9th, 1863, it was reported that Kelly was regained from missing in action. So Kelly clearly must have gone missing between July of 1863 and October 9th. So that's, so three months, three months. So you would think since he was reported as, hey, he was missing and now he's back, you would think that error would have been corrected, especially since the Soldiers National Cemetery was consecrated in November of 1863, when Lincoln delivered his famous Gettysburg Address. 
So there was time to fix the error. But we're also talking 1860s, bookkeeping, record keeping, mail, and whatnot, so eh. Stephen Kelly continued to serve, and he was eventually mustered out in September of 1864 after he served out his term. But the big question here is, how did this happen in the first place? How was it that Stephen Kelly was looking down at his own grave, and it stayed that way? He tried to get it corrected, but he couldn't. After the Battle of Gettysburg, a man by the name of Samuel Weaver was enlisted to recover the bodies of the Union soldiers that were buried in shallow graves all over the battlefield. After the battle, shallow graves were dug. It started to stink because we're talking Pennsylvania in July. Also, the day after the battle, it rained. We're talking 4th of July, it's raining, it's hot, it stinks. Over the course of time, it was reported that body parts were actually sticking out of these shallow graves all over the battlefield. So Gettysburg was not the place to be afterwards. Um, handkerchiefs with lavender was very common to, you know, keep yourself from smelling the stench. And that's actually a smell that's very commonly um, experienced when even modern day visitors go to the battlefield. I guess there's worse things to smell. Samuel Weaver enlisted all of these men to help him dig up these bodies, put them in pine boxes, and then put them out in a cemetery. So basically laying them to rest properly. The Confederate troops were eventually sent to another location. So the Soldiers National Cemetery, you're mainly going to find Union troops. Let's think. How do you identify dead bodies, especially dead bodies after a really intense battle? They may have been exposed to the elements for several days or a month or two. They, you, you probably can't recognize them. What Weaver and his team did was they identified the bodies with any sort of identifying things on them. So we're talking like maybe letters, name tags, backpacks, knapsacks. Uh, canteens, that sort of thing. So according to an account from a man named William C. Ref, Rife, Ref, a canteen with Stephen Kelly's name was found next to the body of the unknown soldier, the soldier that would be buried in Kelly's place. Now there's also speculation that since Kelly was in the hospital during the Battle of Gettysburg that maybe his knapsack was even stolen. Regardless, the poor unknown soul the unknown soldier that was found on Little Round Top next to a canteen with Stephen Kelly's name, or a knapsack, basically became Stephen Kelly. Kelly wasn't able to get the, the marker fixed, so it still had his name. So what he did every Memorial Day, he actually brought flowers and decorated that marker uh, to honor the unknown soldier who died. And the sad thing is, is that the world will never know who that soldier was. Now eventually Stephen Kelly's name was, you know, etched out and that marker now says unknown. So Stephen Kelly lived out the rest of his life in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and he held a few different jobs during his life. Like I, I read that he was a painter and he was a chair maker, so he definitely lived a really interesting life. Apparently he never married, but according to a few census records, he was listed as widowed, so I don't really know what the story is with that. Maybe it was a cover-up, I don't know. Kelly passed away on January 29th, 1889, and he died at home and he was buried in a local cemetery in Philadelphia. I think it might even be a soldier cemetery, but I'm not 100% on that. So if you would like to visit this unknown soldier's grave, you can find it in the Pennsylvania part of the Soldiers National Cemetery in Section A, Site Number 88. I know the next time I go to Gettysburg, I'll definitely be laying some flowers on that grave. If you enjoyed this video, please feel free to comment, let me know, feel free to say hi. I love it when people say hi. And before you go, don't forget to subscribe to this channel, give this video a like, and thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you in the next round.